What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the New Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I tried to will myself <laughs> to say I got to do it because of what I do, because of what I talk about, right? I said to myself, self, why would you go and watch something that you already know what you're going to say about, what you've already heard about? Brian, you went. I want to hear what you have to say spoiler review go ahead yeah aquaman 2 the lost kingdom um yeah i mean i think this i mean i think this was what i expected i think for me processing it coming out I, I was actually kind of really thinking back to the first movie and kind of trying to remember you know what did i like or what did i think you know they were able to capture that this movie just didn't get to um and then i was trying to think of what's my What's my what's my analogy for this movie? So when I, we were talking about the Marvels, I had said like Marvels was kind of to me like a little Batman and Robin ish to me, like in terms of how how goofy it went and sort of how far it went. And, and I got to be honest, Pablo, I actually went and saw the Marvels again. Um, and when we get to our numbers, this hook up, go ahead. The, you know, I gave I, I, I gave it a zero. Um, I might actually give it a half star on the rewatch. I, I got to be honest, but. Um, but it's because, we'll, and we'll talk about it in the context of this movie. But I think I, I want to start with Momoa because I think that's really where you have to start with this movie. Like, forget the movie itself. You got to start with Jason Momoa because this really was, this became his baby. And you can feel that. I have a question for you, which is Is Jason Momoa the modern day Steven Seagal? So let me make the case. Okay. So Steven Seagal in the late 80s like rises to fame playing the exact same character in a series of movies, right? Out for Justice, Mark for Death, Hard to Kill, right? Peaks with his big hit, Under Siege, right? But he's literally the same character doing the same like fake, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every single movie with the same voice, vocal affect. But he becomes a star doing this. Yeah. And so after Under Siege hits big, what happens? They are so desperate to get him to do a sequel, they allow him to direct and star in On Deadly Ground. Aquaman 2 is the On Deadly Ground okay. of the superhero genre. It is an environmental crusade movie fueled by a star playing the same character over and over and over again until he's given too much shine and too much control and the whole thing sinks around him. Jason Momoa. <laughs> Modern day Steven Seagal. That's my wow, bitch. and that's what happened in this movie. Because when I realized the allegories he was trying to create, because I knew it was an environmental movie. Because he, when he was promoting it, he was getting on aircraft, passing out water, like he was talking up, like we need to save the oceans and all that sort of stuff. When I realized, spoiler alert, like, that the plot of this was that Black Manta was melting the polar ice caps, and that the final climactic triumphant scene i'll skip to the end this doesn't matter folks there's nothing consequential <laughs> here the dceu is dead so i'm not wasting any of your time let me talk we talk about movie ripoffs okay <clears throat> you rip off a movie at least when we talked about Zack snyder ripping off movies in rebel moon at least he was ripping off classics he ripping off yeah. star wars he ripping off you know magnificent seven lord of the ring aquaman gives a speech at the end of this movie which is 1% trolling the MCU because he said the last line of this movie is I'm Aquaman. And he laughs like I'm Iron Man. But the speech itself is about saving the speech itself is about saving the planet. And you know what speech I kept hearing in my head as he was saying it? Quest for peace. They ripped oh. off the Superman press conference at the end of this movie. I'm like, if you're going to rip off a movie and you're going to rip off Superman 4, that's all you need to know. I was like, he's standing in front of the United Nations talking about Atlantis coming to help the, the, the surface dwellers to save the oceans and save the environment. It is no different than, Chris, than Christopher Reeve with a pot belly saying he's going to get rid of nuclear weapons. It's the same thing. If I would have been watching that movie and, uh, and would have seen that, I would have taken that as a cheap attempt at 
in Justice League. Well, well, not multiple times, only once in Justice League Unlimited, not Justice League Unlimited. I think the regular Justice League where he goes to the UN to talk to. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah That's yeah. even in the premiere, in the pilot, he does it. Like where he basically is like, the, where they name him like the world's defender, right? Which then leads yeah. to the secret origins. And then yeah. Yeah. The leaf. yeah. But the point is when you see this, and if you remember, like I used On Deadly Ground, but if you remember Quest for Peace, Christopher Reeve was really at the forefront of making Quest for Peace. That became like a personal crusade for him. Um, they couldn't get mm. the money. They had to use another studio. And so this press conference, you could feel it. When he gives that at the end, you're like, oh, this is, this is what he meant by I pitched stuff to the studio and they went for it. Like when you see this, you're like, this is the star just being like, I got this. Like all y'all just stand aside. I got this. Um, I think the thing that this movie, but I think the thing that this movie really fails to do that the first one actually did well to its credit, albeit it was silly. It gave some of the very talented supporting actors they have some really good scenes to kind of do something, you know, at least was a little fun. Like I thought like William, Willem Dafoe's Volko, like some of the training scenes. I thought the, like in the first one, I thought the fight scene with Manta um, kind of in the Mediterranean uh, with uh, Mira running on the rooftops and like using the wine to like beat some of the guys. Like, there's some originality in, in the way it's shot and the, how it looks. None of that is in this movie. This movie is mailed in by everyone who was involved. So every fight scene, as big as it is, no matter how many explosions there are, and there's a ton, is so formulaic. There is nothing you haven't seen uh, that if you saw the first movie. And so it, and like, the actors they have at their disposal, like Nicole Kidman, are given nothing at all to do. Nothing. Like, we've spent all this time wondering what would happen to Amber Heard, but like, in reality, you know, she, what happened to her part wasn't really any different than what happened to Dolph Lundgren or what happened to Nicole Kidman. Like, Defoe's not even in this movie. They don't even, they don't even mention Volko. Like, we don't even know what happened to him. They just, he's yeah. ignored. So, and, and, and I can tell you why, which is Willem Defoe was like, well, thanks. <laughs> You know, so I'm good. I'm good. He said, I'm exactly. Good. <laughs> I'm all right. So he's like, I'll do, I'll go reprise Goblin. I'm not going to bother with this. So <laughs> you just don't get any of that fun of that. The first one did manage to capture of having these talented people do silly things, you know, in, in some somewhat cool scenes. And this movie just doesn't do that. It's very formulaic. It's very loud. It's very disjointed. And you're just What's kind of left with it? another mess at the end, and I haven't even gotten to Yaya because he gets his own. He gets his own section. But what's 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 loud? What what, what what you're saying? I think they just like Juan went really big in the set pieces. Like there's a lot of destruction. Like it's like Man of Steel esque level. Like you know, the cliffs are falling down, and the sea creatures are like being blown in all sorts of directions, and the ships and the lasers. It's just like it's like very Snyder esque, actually. Like there's a lot on screen, but there's no real originality to it. There's no vantage. that's what I mean. Like there was you know in the first one, I did feel like in the action there were a couple of vantage points that were cool. Like when he's when he you know attacks the sub in the opening sequence you know permission to come aboard like some of that fighting looked kind of neat i thought like yeah. i hadn't seen him do it before but in this one it's just like a mishmash of very cliche type of action or fist or superpower fist fights or our hero getting hit by a laser beam and you know sent across the screen so it just there wasn't any of that fun um that there yeah. was in the, in the first one what was the humor like, Brian? Oh, because because um, uh, I know that that that's what they were aiming for when they were doing this film. Um, you saw it in the trailers. Yeah. How was what was the humor like, and what was the chemistry between um, Patrick Wilson? Is it Patrick Wilson? Yeah. And 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 Momo. Well, non-existent, which you could tell from the trailer, and honestly, you could sort of tell from the first movie. Like they don't share a lot of scenes together until the end. And, and that one fight in the beginning, but they never seem like they're feeding off each other, right? They're, they're, they're not gonna make anyone forget about De Niro and Pacino and Heat sitting in the, in the diner. Um, so I, when they're tasked with being buddy cops in this one, there's just nothing there. Like when they're kind of wisecracking to each other, it feels very stiff, you know? And I think Momoa fell victim to the same thing that Chris Hemsworth did in Love and Thunder, which is like he took he took the bro, the surfer dude bro silliness that kind of won him points and charisma in the first one and cranked the volume on it in his lines for this one. Like everything is a pop culture reference. Like everything. Like 
like, I'm serious. If, if you like sci-fi fantasy movies, Jason Momoa references them in this film. Like he calls Patrick Wilson Loki. He references Harry Potter. He references like all these, it's like very self-aware of like all these other films that have been made. And it's like, but listen, when, when he tried to be Iron, but he tried to be Tony Stark. Yeah. And so like, it's like, but he kind of missed, it's just like, yeah, we liked that when it was 10% of your character. When it's 90% of your character, you're a joke. You are the joke. You aren't making jokes. I spoke to Freddie. He said he watched it. Shout out to Freddie. Um, he watched it on his bootleg uh, phone. <clears throat> he went to them websites. Y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all do it too. Uh, and he said, Yaya's character, this is what it should have been in the first film. Your thoughts on Yaya's uh character in this film compared to the first um i think it's a fair comment in the sense that he just has more screen time and so you see more of the vendetta and the anger um but what i would say is by trapping him in this idea of another trident that sort of clouds his mind with more vent thoughts of vengeance than evil it almost i thought undermined what made him angry in the first right which was Aquaman left my father to die. That actually has some emotional resonance, right? When you switch that out for, here's a magical object that glazes over your eyes and basically brainwashes you in the service of this evil God, you're no longer out to avenge your father, right? Which then leads to, he literally is out to destroy the planet. And you're like, dude, you were trying to destroy one dude. Why are you melting Antarctica and the Arctic? Like that's a like they, those are two very different realities, and like he plays it right to the point about the clown work comment, he plays it straight. Like he's very intense, like he's very angry, um, and he does wreak a lot of havoc in this movie. But the stakes of why to me are so much weaker than the first one because they're relying on this trident clutch to make crutch to make him Aquaman's physical equal that you just don't you don't empathize with the cause um, in any way. And that's the part I was probably most disappointed in. But I have to say, he has my absolute favorite moment in the movie. And like, it, he had to, he had to have been in on the joke filming this scene. So spoiler alert, he dies in this movie, which I think when he made the clown work comment way back when, you and I probably could have told you that he was not gonna be in an Aquaman 3 if there was one. <laughs> but the way it goes, and I, it, He's hanging off the side of a cliff after having lost the battle. And Momoa is standing over him. And of course, because Momoa is our hero, he gives him a long look and then he kneels down and reaches down his hand to save him. And Yaya pulls himself, he does a pull up as if he's going to take the hand, looks at the camera and says, never! And falls to his own death. And all I can think about was with the crowd work comment, he's like, I'm out! You know, I was dying when he did it. Oh, uh, <laughs> that is gonna be when you see it. It's gonna be talk about short. That's gonna be memed. Never <laughs> falls into the chasm. I was laughing. That was my funniest moment of the movie. I thought, of, especially uh, given what we know, nah. it was so amazing. I don't want to waste too much time when I know something isn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think the first one, I think the first one had much more of a, as silly as it was, a quest, right? This sense of like they're searching for Atlan's trident. It takes them to different locations. There's a clear linear path that they're following to get to their objective. And at each point along the way, something at least somewhat entertaining happens. This one yeah. really loses that in the name of, hey, we just need bigger and we need louder and we need to have a fight here and, and just you can feel that difference. So no, I mean, it definitely, I see, you can see, I feel like what Zasloff was afraid of and why he didn't talk about this, why they re did so many reshoots, like why this thing kind of, you know, became this sort of cluster, you know, that we ultimately see to where honestly, like, yeah, we can talk, we'll talk about Amber Heard in a second, but like, she's not like her absence or how she's used is is not even like it doesn't make the top three of like the most disjointed or confusing things about this movie although she is clearly like shafted in the in the cut in the final cut 
And what was her role in this one? Because like, that was she's like, kind of, she's, she's kind of, she's kind of like Waldo. Like she like appears and then disappears, and you could tell us because of the edit. Um, but like, there's definitely scenes where you're like, I know that she shot lions here, but they just cut away from her. And then the next scene, it's like she's not in the room anymore. And then like all of a sudden, they're oh. like sitting talking to Ocean Master, and like Aquaman's talking, and the camera pans out. Oh, there's there's Mira. <laughs> she's right there. Like you know. And then she has one triumphant like action moment, and then she has one moment where you're supposed to care. But you're like, because they've chopped up the part so much, and because she no longer really is his his partner in terms of the in terms of the narrative, it, <sighs> it, it just it's like why? Like you know, it's empty. Like, yeah, it's really exactly. It's just like why? Like why did you should have just had a different? You should have had Nicole Kidman's character be the one do this because at least she's still like fully part of the story. So yeah, it, it, you could feel it, but I would say yeah. she wasn't alone in terms of getting edited in a way where you're just like, well, why is this actor even in the movie anymore? So it's fair to say that that um, it's over. Finally, oh, yeah. the DCEU is over. The fact that they put a credit scene in this, even though it wasn't one that went anywhere, to me was like doubly insulting. What did they do? Well, they were. Tr I think they had this running joke, which was not really a joke. It became like a gross out scene of like Ocean Master had never tasted like surface dwelling food. So like Momo is giving him crap about like, you never had burgers and fries, you never had ribs, you never. <laughs> and then like he and then he basically hands him this like giant beetle to eat and tries to play it off. It's like, yeah, Earth people love eating bugs. And so then Ocean Master eats the bug and it's disgusting. And so they doubled down on that joke in the cutscene where he's like trying other food and you're just like so you're you 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 try to steal the I'm Iron Man line at the end of this movie. This is your answer to the shawarma scene probably at the end of Avengers, which was a little bit of a victory lap for a movie that was great. Like why are we sticking around to even see anything at the end of this movie knowing that it's going absolutely nowhere? So I don't know. It would, you know. Yeah. This is this is that moment you you saw the video where I put the Hulk, you wanted it? <laughs> Take it all. You can't have outings like this and expect for the fanfare to continue. So No, you need to accept being directed. Like that yeah. like that's a lot of what this felt like, right? And like I said, we saw Hemsworth <laughs> and Taika make the same mistake in Love and Thunder. And so that's a director and an actor together, like making the same mistake. But it's like you need to trust the people around you who are writing and directing and editing to kind of be like, yo, you, you know, this is what make, makes you successful. We're going to put you in positions to be successful. You're not always the best judge of that. Um, all right. Um, Brian, out of five. It's tough because I gave the Marvels a zero. And I'm like, <laughs> this movie is not worse than the Marvel. Like, it's not. Like, I, I was like, I. I went back and rewatched the Marvels. I'm going to move the Marvels to 0. 0.5 um, so I can give this a 0. 0.5 and make them even. <laughs> That's basically like, okay. I'm basically cheating a little bit because I'm like, I feel like they're pretty much cut from the same cloth of disaster for very different reasons. Um, but I, I just don't think there's a lot redeeming here. And you, if you saw the first one, you definitely have seen this one already, basically. It's just more of the goofy and none of the creative. And I'm very glad that this will be the end of, of this franchise. I wanna say this right now. I don't care who dislikes this, but Dark Phoenix, Phoenix was better than this. Yes, I would it had agree. Had to be better than this. I Dark Phoenix agree. wasn't a bad movie. It was just a movie that nobody, this was going no, nowhere. Yeah, this Dark, Dark Phoenix was, is like a one and a half, you know, movie, this versus a half. I mean, this is, yeah, this is worse than that. This yeah. is more mailed. I guess here's the thing. The Marvels was not mailed in. That's the one thing I no. would say. There's performances to me, like especially with Kamala Khan um, and, 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 uh, Marie, and uh, Monica Rambeau, where there's, there's people working there. There's people putting in work to build a character and play a part. I didn't get the sense anyone in this movie was working hard. Like it, it kind of just felt like everyone showed up to set, went through the motions, went home. Yeah. Yeah. Including Momoa, because I don't think it's hard for him to be a ham. Like, that's just who yeah. he is. So I don't yeah. think he was working that hard. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of uh, Aquaman 2. 
Um, aren't you glad it is over? And hopefully we get a new Aquaman in Jace, in James Gunn's universe. But let's see because well, let's hope that Aquaman doesn't appear in Superman Legacy because no, mean, no, we, no, we no, get no, a lot no. of a lot of characters that yeah, way. yeah, 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 even yeah, for yeah, our yeah. taste, but yeah. But hopefully, you know, there's some teasing of certain things. Who knows? But yeah, we don't we don't need to see Aquaman anytime soon. Uh, but you let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Aquaman 2. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Are you glad it's over? Um, what do you think of Jason Momoa? And are you looking forward to seeing him in Lobo? I'm pretty sure you are. But is it going to be Lobo or more of Jason Momoa in costume? Let us know in the comment section below. And I'll see, we'll, we'll see you next time on the Energy Report. The show goes on! Yeah!